Welcome back everybody. Today I want to start reviewing Britney Spears' entire catalog starting off with her debut album, Baby One More Time. I actually was planning on doing this earlier, but there was some controversy involving Britney and Justin where I didn't want to deal with the Britney stands at the time and I feared negative reviews that come with stand culture. Luckily, time has passed and I'm ready to get into her entire catalog. Now, my thoughts on Britney Spears is, I like a few of her songs here and there, but I never listened to a full album of hers. So some of the stuff that I'm going to be listening to is going to be new to me. So, what do I think of the album? Stay tuned to find out. Before we begin, if you want to see music bios or more good videos like this, hit the subscribe button. Also, I've started a Patreon account. On here you get more copyrighted material and they'll be uploaded 48 hours prior to YouTube. If you want to support or visit, link is in the description. And without further ado, on to our feature presentation. Okay, the opening track is the title track, and it's a proper introduction to a pop princess. I've already reviewed the song on my best of 1999 list, and I said something like this. Flashback. Let me just say, thank God TLC turned down this song because this song was made for Britney Spears. The stock Max Martin with the piano, and Britney having doubts about this love, and how lonely is not good for her health. Overall, this is a good song, it has its flaws, but it's still a great introduction to a pop princess. And my views on this song remains the same. You Drive Me Crazy, that song has two different versions that I'm familiar with. The first is the music video version. The production on that song do feel a bit over the top, but still a fun listen. Then there's the stop version, which has more guitars and Britney's vocals is more showcased here. The pre-course is longer. You know, the loving you means so much more part. There's a part of the song that tries to make a key change before going into a guitar solo. But if you ask me, I will probably stick with the original version because yes, the production is over the top, it's more fun. Sometimes it's a song that never really connected with me. The stock Max Martin production sounds okay with twinkles here and there, but we get a version of Vulnerable Britney because she seems hesitant and fearful about this love and wants to hold them tight. And love them and then the bridge comes in and asks for her trust and adding on to her own trust issues I might be overthinking the content and again this isn't bad but I just won't revisit it on the other hand soda pop is an abysmal song the song has reggae feel and the production really weighs this down then there's Britney's vocals and they're all over the place she's trying to sound strong on this terrible sugary song and the course doesn't make any sense Open that soda bop, bop, shoe bop, shoe bop, the clock is ticking and we can't stop. Honestly, to feel like this song was made for Radio Disney. Overall, this is a definite skip. Born to Make You Happy is one of my favorite songs on the album. For one, Max Martin didn't produce this, but another European producer named Kristen London did. It gives the production a different feel than a regular Max Martin stock production. Although the melody is fine, I do think the writing is a little weak. And also, this is a victim of bad aging, where Brady spent all these years making her fans and her inner circle happy, but she herself forgot how that feels. But despite these issues, this is still a fun listen. From the bottom of my broken heart is another side of Vulnerable Britney, a heartbreak ballad, and Britney sounds good here. I think the second verse is more telling that she wants her ex to stay and give this relationship one more try, but the ex then moved on, leaving Britney all alone. Even the bridge is fine because the ex promised they stay but still to prove unloyal to Britney. Overall this is a good performance from Britney and it's one that I often relist. Okay with the singles being done, the rest of the album are album cuts and I Will Be There feels like it. It's not a bad song but it's one of the more forgettable songs on this album. I Will Still Love You is a duet with Don Phillips and I noticed that Britney doesn't do a lot of duets but this one works but it doesn't work. I don't know much about Don Phillip, but he and Britney have good vocal chemistry. And I think a song like this, the content isn't really all that important. It's all about the chemistry between Don and Britney. As I already said, it's good for the album. But Don is the clear weak link on this album, as his vocals aren't really that special. And you could tell he didn't get the opportunity to find himself. Give this song to AJ from Backstreet, and this will be better than what it is. But as is, 
It's an underrated song. I'll stick up for it. Thinking About You is another not bad but forgettable track, so I don't know much to say about it. Many people say that this is the worst song on this album, but I don't think it is as bad as it is, but I can see the flaws. One, like Born to Make You Happy. This song didn't age well because who will email anyone these days? And two, Britney vocals aren't that great on here either. She sounds very nasally and worst of all, checked out. And again, I don't think this is as bad as it could have been, but it's not worse than The Beat Goes On, the album Closer, which is a cover of the Sonny and Cher classic. And too bad the production is very bad with a ton of unneeded symbols and irrelevant sounds. Another one of those songs that will fit more with Radio Disney. And once again, Britney seems checked out on here as well as the production is louder than she is. This is a mess and a bad way to close an album. That concludes this review. Kind of a downer way to end this review, but those just the breaks. It's a debut album and I think the falls do stand out, but I'll give her this. At least she knows how to pick singles because they wind up being the best songs on the entire project. The rest of the album never translated to that and I was going to give it a 5 out of 10 ranking, but because the singles were great, I bumped it up to a 6 out of 10 ranking. Also, I have to cut some slack given that it's a debut album and there's room for improvement. Next album is Oops I Did It Again, released in 2000, where Britney continued to capitalize on her growing momentum. And on that note, that concludes Baby One More Time album review. Tell me what y'all think in the comments below. What are some of your favorite songs from this album? Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe to the channel. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.